In this slideshow, we're going to look at some different forms of art um, in the late 19th and early 20th centuries. And we'll start with Impressionism. Um, then we'll look at some of the changes that take place in Cubism. And finally, we'll look at growing abstraction um, in art that takes place during the time period of the World Wars and um, its aftermath. Um, Impressionism is the beginning of a revolution in artwork and depiction. Um, it's considered to be like the French Revolution of art in that it shatters um, tradition. The Impressionists were uh, the artists of uh, this revolution in visual depiction. And they came predominantly, overwhelmingly, from the middle class, the bourgeoisie. Impressionism is a very materialistic outlook on the world in that it's a statement that there is um, no meaning beyond the physical world, but that the physical world does contain meaning. Um, the Impressionists believe that um, reality is based in the reality of each and every single moment alone. And that's what they're looking to capture. They're capturing an impression, and that's why it's called Impressionism, an impression of a single moment. All that exists through the Impressionist outlook on reality is this one moment in time. So Impressionism is a very individualistic uh, movement in artwork and a very individualistic outlook on existence um, because one is painting the impression, uh, one's own impression of, let's say, haystacks. And here you have Claude Monet's um, famous series of haystacks. So the world is, in, through this lens, simply a phenomenon. And meaning comes from one um, capturing uh, one's own um, fleeting personal impression, but um, seizing that moment and capturing it and making it eternal or immortal in uh, and through uh, the painting. So one is, um, in Impressionism, one is depicting one's own subjective personal impression uh, of, uh, of a landscape. So you can see um, Monet, his Haystack series, is a series of his own individual impressions of um, haystacks at different times of day in different forms of light. A light was very important to the Impressionists. Um, they believed that light reveals the constant change that takes place in the physical world and therefore is the basis of this belief that the only reality is the reality of the single instant. And the only um, lens through which to view that is the personal lens. So here you can see a number of Monet's Haystacks, um, he does a series of these works in the late 19th century. So Impressionism as a movement feeds into these larger themes we've been talking about in class, like subjectivism and relativism. And here the doctrine is that um, beauty or understanding uh, is merely subjective. It's an impression. The meaning that comes with each fleeting moment that's constantly changing is only captured through the individual lens and therefore is highly subjective. There is no external or common truth, but instead there is the meaning and truth that comes with the individual experiencing 
on their own each and every single moment of physical reality. And here you can see another example. This is uh, of um, Impressionism. This is uh, Claude Pissarro's uh, Boulevard Montmartre. And again, you can see the significance and importance of capturing light um, as a point of revelation for the constant change. So here is, <laughs> sorry about that. Here is um, Pissarro's uh, impression of a uh, street scene in Paris. Okay, and then uh, you can see that this revolution in art continues on into Cubism, and Pablo Picasso was a major innovator in Cubism. And Cubism takes this notion of relativism even a step further. And here you see uh, cubism also takes um, art to even a higher level of abstraction. Here's Picasso's Girl with Mandolin. And cubism is an art form that depicts objects, in this case, a uh, woman uh, holding a mandolin, um, from a multitude of viewpoints at once. So you can connect this with the notion of relativism that everything is dependent on the perspective of the viewer. So there is no one depiction of an object. There are multiple viewpoints through which to view any single object. And you can contrast that with the realists of the middle of the 19th century. Here, this is a statement about hard and fast truth regarding human existence. And these are Corbet's Stonebreakers. Here you can see the influence of relativism taking place within Western civilization. And it's the belief that this depiction is of greater truth, uh, of reality, than, than this depiction. By the early 20th century, when Picasso is painting um, these a cubist approach. Um, he is claiming that this creates a more realistic picture of um, the object than a straightforward uh, realist approach. And you can see cubism also develops into uh, even greater abstraction within its abstraction. And this is Delaunay's um, simultaneous windows on the city. So if you kind of um, kind of squint a little bit and look at this um, painting, maybe some aspects of the city scene and the light uh, in the city. Perhaps you see some buildings, some blue sky, maybe you can make out some aspects of the city. But of course, it's going towards greater abstraction. And by the time of the World Wars and post-World Wars, you have artists like American um, Jackson Pollock. And Pollock then is painting in very abstract form. And Pollock's artwork um, begs the question, and each and every one of his artworks begs the question, what does this mean to you? What does this image mean to you? And inherently, this image and collection of pigments on the canvas is going to bring out different thoughts, different emotions, different conclusions, analysis based on the individual. So again, the artwork is reflecting the realities of the time in Western civilization where relativism is becoming more and more, sorry again, relativism is becoming more and more of a uh, outlook within the civilization. So in this case, the meaning of this, of this um, Jackson Pollock um, painting is not 
promoted as absolute. He's not arguing for an absolute truth or conclusion that everybody should come to in viewing this painting. It depends. The truth and meaning of this painting exists only in relation to one's personal context, one's personal reaction. All right, thanks a lot for uh, listening to um, the overview of late 19th century and 20th century art. And uh, I will see you soon, next week.